We've been talking seven millimeter a lot on the channel lately. This time we're gonna talk seven rem mag. Yeah, I'm here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm back with the hunting man, Guy Miner. Thank you for joining us, Guy. Oh, <laughs> you bet, thank you. Yeah, so you all have seen a lot of seven millimeter content on the channel, not just seven rem mag. We talked about the Bergara, your son's Bergara, right? right. We've featured this Ruger number one multiple times, but I've gone kind of like crazy with seven PRC. And one of the things that has come up is, hey, would you compare seven SOM to seven PRC? Would you compare seven REM mag to seven PRC? So we thought a couple things. I asked Guy, could we do seven REM mag and could we share some stories with Sierra hunting bullets? And here we are. Absolutely. Good bullets. Uh, gosh, I started using them a long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, probably 1970s, and I've used them for both hunting and target shooting. I, I like Sierra. So you got your Game Kings, which we're going to feature in this story, and then you got your Match Kings, and Match Kings are legendary. Absolutely. Yeah, those things, uh, gosh, they dominated the high power shooting mm -hmm. when I was doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they were all over the line. I think they're still a really big influence. I don't shoot that anymore, so I'm not hands-on with it, but yeah. Right. So this story, Wyoming, two different hunts and two different success stories. Tell us about the bullet. About the bullet? Yeah. Cool. Um, now we'll get into all the specifics in a minute. Yeah. What, what bullet are we talking about? We're talking about the 160 grain yep. soft point boat tail Sierra Game King for the seven millimeter. Gotcha. Okay. So a little bit of background information about hunting in Wyoming. Long shots, being prepared for long shots. And this is not a long range rifle, but you can still stretch it out and get out there hundreds of yards, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not uh, serious about shooting game real far out, mm -hmm. but a 400, 450 yard shot and I can handle that and the rifle can handle that. You bet. Mm -hmm. um, and this bullet can handle that. Nice. A little bit of information about the loads and uh, the hunting stories. So tell us about the rifle. Well, the rifle I picked up used uh, two or three years ago, a um, mm -hmm. little more than two years ago, because I wound up hunting with it a couple of years ago. Um, it had been very lightly used and put away and set in storage, according to the original owner. Mm -hmm. And um, I uh, bought it off gun broker and he had a great price on it and I got a great rifle. He said he only put a box of shells through it. I believe it. Wow, so seven rem mag. Ruger number one, which is a falling block action. Right. Strength, simplicity, and precision. Yeah, yeah, and there's there's people that uh, will tell you that the Ruger number one is not a particularly accurate rifle. Um, it's good enough. And the ones that I've had, I've had five of them over the years, and they've all been de well, decently accurate. Yeah, I'm so down, down to two now. With this guy with loads that it really likes off of, say, sandbags at 100 or, or whatever, however you like to shoot it, what what kind of groups are you going to typically be able to get? Typically an inch or a little under. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, for hunting, that's fine. Yeah, that's actually really good. So you've got a 26 inch, one in nine twist barrel. Yes, pretty, pretty standard for the seven rem mag. So it's not going to go super heavy like the seven PRC would, but you're going to still be able to stabilize what, what I've, would you I've shot uh, 175 grain Sierra Game Kings and 175 nozzler partitions from that just fine, good, gotcha. good accuracy. But they're not the really long, high BC 175s that we're seeing now mm -hmm. and 180s and 190s. Yeah. Uh, they're, not, they're not that, so that's why the, uh, the PRC has a faster twist rate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And my take on it is if you, if you really want to run those bullets and you're interested in factory ammunition and not having to custom build a rifle with a fast twist, that's a really great, you know, value proposition. But there's nothing wrong with seven rem mag. No, it's a, it's a fine cartridge. It's been around since the early '60s, mm -hmm. um, and it, there was probably a long time there where it was sort of a standard mule deer, mm -hmm. antelope, elk rifle. Mm -hmm. Found found one in every hunting camp. It seemed like. Yeah. So versatility, I love it. Absolutely. Okay, so tell me about your load development. Load development was pretty easy. I hadn't had a seven mag in a while, mm -hmm. uh, but I had worked up to a, a load that I found worked really well in a lot of different seven millimeter Remington Magnums. I loaded it for some friends, I loaded it for myself. Gotcha. And that was 160 grain bullet, mm 
In this okay. case, I went with the Sierra. Um, CCI 250, Magnum Primer. Okay. 65 grains of Reloader 22. Hmm. And that always got me somewhere between 3,000 and 3,100 feet per second and nice tight groups and never any pressure signs. Yeah. So. I was just watching one of Jim Harmer's videos. Jim is the guy that runs Backfire. And he was talking about a seven millimeter running somewhere around a 175 at 3,000. Yep. Like, like that is just a winning proposition for a variety of game, elk on down to mule deer, whatever. So it sounds like you're right there. Now, where is that charge weight at with respect to max? Uh, according to the Sierra manual, I'm a couple tenths of a grain under max. Okay, gotcha. Just, I mean, I'm right up there, mm -hmm. but not quite. And do you see any indications of pressure? No. No, it works just fine. This, this is where a Magnum is truly, really nice, is it's built for it, right? You've got a larger bolt face, you've got the powder capacity, you know, you've typically got a barrel length that's gonna work with all of that, and you can get that amazing performance without having to have sticky bolts and, you know, flattened primers and, and, and that kind of thing. It's interesting too, I've, uh, I've read and heard about pressure problems with the seven millimeter Remington Magnum mm -hmm. when it's up there near max. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never run into that myself, but I didn't run those really hot loads that it was being used with in the early and mid 60s. Right. And those, uh, those ballistics were pretty amazing, but I mm -hmm. could also take a look at it and go, yeah, okay, I could see where that could be a little, right. little iffy time to time. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes there's no no need in my opinion, right? If your goal is 2,000 feet per second for a copper bullet or or slightly under for an expanding, you know, conventional bullet. Yeah, yeah, you're, for, you're for retain, retain velocity downrange. Oh, yeah, because this, this thing will hold its velocity very well. Out Until there. you get it out beyond 700, you're not even really thinking about it, right? I mean, in terms of it actually being an issue. <laughs> that's a long shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's my thought, exactly. Okay, so let's talk about the 160 soft point boat tail game king yeah um sierra makes those with a with a profile that's very similar to their match king mm -hmm. and for me one of the reasons i really like the match king and the game king both is what i, I think of as easy accuracy if i don't know what if i've got a, a new cartridge a new rifle new to me uh, and I don't know what I want to shoot out of it, mm -hmm. that's usually one of my first bullets to try mm -hmm. because if it won't shoot that, it won't shoot anything. Right. Um, and yeah. some bullets are pretty finicky. These are not. These yeah. are easy accuracy. You've you got to love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Load them up and, and I, you know, it wasn't that hard. I worked up the pressure signs and everything until, until there were some and there weren't any and I uh, got up to a max on the, on the mm -hmm. manual and it shot great. So it's funny, the, uh, the BC on this, is listed as 0.455, which sounds real low to us today because we're dealing with some of these real streamlined bullets that start with a G1 of 0.5 something or even 0.6 mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. um, but in its day, when it was came out, mm -hmm. you know that was pretty high. And yeah. and I look at and I'm I'm very used to shooting bullets like that, and they worked real well for me. You boot them out with enough velocity, and they'll do fine yeah. for a three or four hundred yard shot. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, 120 to 175 would be the typical weight range for a 7 rem mag. This is kind of right in there in the middle, a little bit maybe over the middle. And like you're saying, that the, the BC also actually is right in, in the middle of the range. And, you know, you've got a 1 in 9 twist, and this bullet is going to stabilize with any 7 rem mag. I mean, would that be 1 in 10 as well? Would you find that in some of the rifles? I don't know if there's one in tens. There's one in nine and a quarter, one in nine and a half. Gotcha. There's been some variations in there. Um, and it's always worked, always worked in those rifles for me. Yeah. So if you have a REM mag, you can just kind of run this bullet and know that, you know, you're not even going to have to it's, worry about it's it. It's going to work. Cool. All right. So w this is a pretty compelling picture. Tell us about this. <laughs> that was, uh, that was sight in day out at uh, 300 yards. I had a, a steel target out mm -hmm. there. And I made a couple of adjustments and fired uh, three more shots there at 300 yards off the bench. And I was like, wow, um, I was impressed. Mm -hmm. So brought it home and pulled out the measuring tape. And um, yeah, I, and, and it was repeatable. I shot several more groups under two wow. inches 
three shots. I'm, I'm kind of thinking your vitals are like this and the, your, your group is like that. That's a pretty good equation. It, it is, it <laughs> is. Now, it doesn't mean that I can't mess up a shot, but <laughs> right. that's me. The rifle, the bullet, the load all works great. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's an outstanding result. Okay, so let's talk through the hunts. Right, I've been hunting Wyoming for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. I don't go every year. Usually I go every two or three years. And there's issues with trying to draw a tag and they've tightened up on those for non-residents now. So it's a little tougher to draw that tag. But mm -hmm. if you get drawn, there's just an abundance of game. There's, there's land that is, there's flatlands, there's ranch lands, there's farmlands, there's mountains, there's mountains that are bigger than the other mountains. <laughs> um, it's just, a, and the, the variety of game and the game that you can see in one day, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen whitetail, mule deer, pronghorn, and elk all in the same day. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, you still have to hunt. They're out there, but sure. that doesn't mean that it's just going to come walk up to you and hop in the back of your truck. Yeah. So, got to go hunt. My favorite are the mule deer. Mm-hmm. And I like to get out early in the morning, start glassing pre-dawn, mm -hmm. and watch that sun come up and see if I can figure out where the mule deer are. They've got a pattern to them. Um, typically, they'll, they'll feed and water at night, mm -hmm. and then they'll come back up to some higher ground to bed down in somewhere where they can see and they can look out for dangers like... Sure. You know, hunters. You are uh, a wolf. Yeah, wolf, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Both are hunters, I suppose. Right. Um, yeah. So we're out there. I uh, hunt with some of the same guys a lot of times, and we're out there we're looking around, and it's afternoon, and we see a group of bucks together. They're about a mile away. Wow. So we use some terrain, and we get, get down much, much closer to them, and we're going along a ridge line. Mm -hmm. And one of my buddies is up on top of the ridge, and he's sneaking, and I'm down below him, and worse, and I'm sneaking. I'm on the side of the ridge, and it's, I'm on a mule deer path, but it's kind of iffy, mm -hmm. and so I'm being real careful about my steps. <laughs> and I see antlers sticking up above the, above the brush, and I go, okay, so I'm start scrunching down lower and lower. And pretty soon I'm actually crawling along this, <laughs> to get close to them. Were you and, in a ghillie suit? Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 but I, I was wearing camo. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> one of the cool things about Wyoming is, you know, a, a, an orange hat is enough. Right. So that's right. kind of cool. Um, get out there and finally I get a shot. And I don't really look for the giant trophy deer. I've shot a couple of pretty big muleys, mm -hmm. uh, big as far as I'm concerned, nothing that's gonna make the record book, but this guy, I liked. There was there was a, a safe, easy shot, 150 yards, uh, big enough deer. He was bigger than the other one that was standing next to him. Nice. Um, just a three pointer, but mm -hmm. that's okay. And, and what was your what was your support? What what did you shoot off of? That was that was challenging because this this slope was pretty darn steep, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and about the time the mule deer started getting a little bit curious about what what is that that's sort of creeping towards us. Right. Um, so I'm kind of in a modified kneeling, sitting, leaning against the side of the hill kind of a thing. And, and sadly, you know, my, my crosshairs wandered a little bit farther back in the lungs than I would have liked. Gotcha. But one shot, stood there for a second, and then thud. He was nice. done. So, so Game King did the job, huh? It sure did. It did. <laughs> it put him down right away. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's a one and done, one and done deal. Now, how about the antelope? Tell us about that. Ah, the antelope. Um, I've got, taken five of them over the years, only one with a seven mag. Antelope is not a real big animal. Mm -hmm. uh, a big buck is 120-ish pounds, I think, mm -hmm. roughly. So a lot of them are not really very big. What would you guess that the mule deer weighed, just for comparison, oh, oh, this an, one? an easy 200. Okay. Yeah, sure. 200, 250, somewhere Kind of a there. medium size Yeah. -ish. Yeah. yeah, he was in pretty big body. Um, Tasted great. <laughs> nice. Um, I think he must have been feeding down in the rancher's alfalfa yep. field at night or something. But so the antelope, uh, I blew a couple of stalks. And antelope are really fun to stalk. I like it. And there's lots of them out there. There's something like 500,000 antelope in Wyoming. Wow. So you can find antelope. Now, if you can find them on land, you've got permission to hunt. Sure. That's, that's a different story. Yeah, right. But there's a lot of antelope out there. They're fun to hunt. They tend to be a herd animal. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, when you see the herd, when they, when they bed down, I've seen them form a perimeter. It reminded me of old Marine Corps days when you form a defensive <laughs> perimeter. And they're all looking out. And they got great eyesight. And if one of them gets nervous about that guy kind of inching towards mm -hmm, them, mm -hmm. it'll stand up and leave. And the other ones don't even question it. They get up and leave too. Yeah. And so, whew, there they are. They're gone. Interesting. Um, 
fun to hunt though, and I, I blew a couple of stocks on this. Uh, had an easy shot and and couldn't couldn't make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? And that was on a big buck. I wish I'd have got him. But anyway, I see this pair of antelope, and we've got a doe and a buck together, and they're quite a ways out. They're out past 300. I know this thing shoots well. I get pretty well braced, and just as I'm starting to squeeze off that shot, this happens in hunting, they start moving. Right. So I made a pretty crummy shot. It dropped him in a uh -huh. heartbeat. Okay, but where did it hit? It was a mess. <laughs> um, that's why there aren't any pictures of that one. Okay. He would have made an ugly trophy. Where was the impact? In the neck. Okay, yeah. gotcha, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Meat for the freezer though. Yeah. <laughs> That was yeah, you know, we, we lost some meat on them too, and gotcha. it was uh, yeah, it was my my bad. So um, so tell me about the seven rem mag for the antelope versus something else, like a two forty three Winchester, for sure. instance, or or whatever else you'd you'd think about. Yeah, antelope, you do not need a cannon. This right. is the seven rem mag is a lot of gun for antelope, and I've shot them with thirty out six and twenty five out six. Uh, I think the 25 out six is just about a perfect cartridge for him. Yeah. 243 Winchester would do just fine. Yeah. You know, with a good hunting bullet in it. Um, it's more with the antelope, like any game animal. It's mostly about shot placement, mm -hmm. and not so much what you're shooting them with. Sure. Any any decent hunting rifle is going to do the mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. Good bullet in the right place. Gotcha. Well, the more you're talking about Wyoming, the more it makes me want to go. <laughs> You should. You should. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I've taken elk, a lot of mule deer, and uh, five antelope out there. Mm -hmm. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So let's come back full circle. Let's talk about the recovered bullets. Were you able to recover one, both? I was able to recover the one from the mule deer. It was okay. uh, we hung him up to uh, to start the skinning process and mm -hmm. all that. And I see there's a lump on the offside, which happens a lot. The, yep. the skin on, on an animal is very elastic. Yeah. And it'll that mushroom bullet goes you know through and mushrooms out and does its damage. And then it hits that skin on the offside and it gets trapped. Mm -hmm. And so I saw that, oh, it was right there. And I just took my little pocket knife, slip, got Perfect. the bullet. And as I recall, it was uh, really nicely mushroomed. And yeah. yeah, this bullet right here. And about yeah. 91 grains, I think, out of the 160 it started with. So it, gotcha. lo it lost a lot of weight, but it did not come apart. Right. In fact, I, I was impressed. I looked at that and I said, man, that looks like a bonded bullet. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people, you know, the, the Sierra Game King uh, may not be known for being the toughest bullet in the world. Mm -hmm. By golly, it works. Yeah. I like it. Nice. So, um, it it had been a while since I hunted with one, and that really reinforced, you know, my my favorable opinion. Hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, so our question for you is: What are you using for mule deer, and what are you using for antelope? Or if you've got a seven rem mag, what are you hunting with that? Thank you, guy, for joining us. This was great discussion. Drop a comment with your feedback, and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.